Well, welcome everybody to the very first episode of the Aviation Insurance Podcast. We're so glad that you're joining us for this podcast and we're excited uh, to have you join us on this journey. What the Aviation Insurance Podcast is going to do, we are going to start to share with you the aircraft owner, the aviation business uh, owner or operator, just the basics of a aircraft and aviation insurance. So we're going to start at the very foundational level, talking about some of the very basics of aviation insurance. We'll get into details about aircraft insurance and down the road, we'll, we'll keep you up to date with market updates. And then we'll get into more complicated things for those of you more on the commercial side of the business. Uh, a lot of this information, uh, from the, our get-go will be complimented by my book, which I'm not here to sell you, but it would be helpful called Aircraft Insurance uh, Foundations, which can be found on Amazon just by searching uh, Aircraft Insurance Foundations by uh, Timothy Bonnell. I think they used my full name for it. So that's a good reference for you, especially for these first podcasts. Again, that's not really a, a moneymaker for me. It's just a good way to share that information and provide you with that value. So for episode one, we're just going to start with some basics of why is aviation insurance or aircraft insurance unique, right? So many of us were used to buying insurance for uh, our cars, maybe our houses or our contents. Uh, for you who are business owners, you maybe uh, have bought different types of insurance. And so why is aircraft insurance unique? Well, uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, this could probably be an hour long episode just on that topic, but let's hit on some of the keys that make it different. Uh, so let's just compare it to buying an auto, right? An auto insurance. So we have a car, a personal car we own. We want to protect it if it's new from uh, it crashing, right? And, and damaging the physical car. We got a big crash, a fender bender. We want that repaired. Or if it's totaled, we want that car replaced. Uh, on our car policy, uh, we can use it basically anywhere, uh, that we can drive it and we can basically let anyone drive it. Uh, if we want a friend, a family member, uh, a colleague to drive it, we can let them drive it. Well, aircraft are a little bit different, right? Aircraft are powered by vastly different, uh, propulsions methods, right? We have, you know, piston aircraft, multi-engine piston aircraft with varying horsepower, we have uh, different numbers of seats, handling characteristics. And so insurance companies really want to have a say in who is piloting the aircraft. So it takes underwriters and insurance companies who have an understanding and a specialization and understanding who uh, and what would ha have the best odds for safely uh, handling and uh, operating an aircraft. So they want to say in that number two aircraft, can have substantially higher values than an automobile. Uh, obviously newer Gulf streams go north of 65 and $70 million. When you get into those range, one insurance company is not going to want to take on that kind of risk. And they're really going to want to have a say in who is operating those. Uh, some of these aircraft have, you know, five, 10, 20 seats and have liability limits on private aircraft of up to, you know, 100, 300, $500 million in liability limits. Again, a lot more care and diligence needs to happen on the underwriting side. And then a lot more care and diligence needs to be happening to spread the risk over multiple insurance companies, uh, whether you as the insurance buyer see that or not. Uh, so it takes a lot of care and attention. So it is very necessary given the increased exposures and the specialization of aircraft to have an aviation insurance specialty field. And so that's why today we're talking to you about aviation insurance. Insuring aircraft and aviation business is considerably different than the rest of the insurance marketplace. So it requires specialization. It requires, it requires people who know what they're doing. And so those are some of the topics we're going to look into. We're going to get very much more specific as we move forward, but it's just very helpful to understand why can't I just call, uh, you know, the person with a sign on the road for insurance on my airplane? or my aviation business. Why can't they just go ahead and handle that? Well, they, their company is not equipped to handle those exposures and have, have the specialists who know how to underwrite those risks. So welcome to the aviation insurance podcast, episode one. And, and I hope you now understand better the reason why there is a aviation insurance specialty market and specialty professionals who know how to, to uh, handle place, underwrite, uh, handle claims and mitigate 
uh, aviation risks for aircraft owners and aviation businesses. So we'll see you in episode two very soon. Thanks for listening to the Aviation Insurance Podcast. If you found this episode of value, please share it with someone who would benefit from this information. Don't forget to subscribe in your podcast player so you don't miss any new episodes and to help our show have more impact. This episode is brought to you by Aris Insurance Solutions, your flight plan for navigating the turbulence of aviation insurance. For more information, visit arisinsurance.com. That is www.aerisinsurance.com. Disclaimer. These episodes are for educational purposes only, and due to the changing regulatory and legal nature of the business, some information may change over time. Having a well-educated and experienced aviation insurance broker on your team is an absolute requirement to success in business and for managing your aircraft and aviation business risks.